Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. It's also the feast day of St. Nicholas of Tolentino. So the second oration, secret and post-communion we pray at Mass today, will take, become from his feast day. Also, Ember Days are fast approaching, not this week, but the following week. Ember Days are September 20th, 22nd, and 23rd. So please do check the back of the Roman Catholic calendar for the rules of fast and abstinence. That'll be for not this Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, but next week, September 20th, 22nd, and 23rd. The second collection today will be for the Roman Catholic magazine expenses, so please do generous so we can keep the Roman Catholic going and uh, being printed uh, throughout the year. So today, of course, is the second collection for the Roman Catholic magazine. The epistle of Pondy Reread for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be made desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in any fault, you who are spiritual, instruct such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so you shall fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man think himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every one prove his own work, and so he shall have glory in himself only, and not in another. For every one shall bear his own burden, and let him that is instructed in the word communicate to him that instructeth him in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what things a man shall sow, those also shall he reap. For he that soweth in his flesh, of the flesh also shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit, of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And doing good let us not fail, for in due time we shall reap not failing. Therefore, while we have time, let us work good to all men, but especially to those who are of the household of the faith. And the Holy Gospel is a gospel taken from St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. At that time, Jesus went into a city called Naim, and there went with him his disciples and a great multitude. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a great multitude of the city was with her, whom, when the Lord had seen, being moved with mercy towards her, he said to her, Weep not. And he came near, and he touched the bier, and they that carried it stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a great fear on them all, and they glorified God, God, saying, A great prophet is risen among us, and God hath visited his people. Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. And there came a great fear on them all, and they glorified God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the Gospel for today, we see our divine Lord performing the miracle of raising a dead man to life. And by doing such, he confirms his teachings. And he confirms his teaching by miracles and those impressive sermons whose arguments consisted of deeds as well as words. And the hearers of our Lord's doctrines saw that his teachings came from God because they were supplanted also and supported by the miracles. For no one else could perform such signs as wonders as our Lord did. And he came from God. St. Augustine says, these marvels were wrought by Christ, not for the sake of the miracles, but that they are to be those eyes who beheld the signs, so reason should comprehend the mysteries hidden within them. The miracles produce different effects upon the minds of men who see them. The raising of the dead to life today is related in the Gospels, awoke a great fear in the people as the apostle, excuse me, the evangelist relates today. And this fear of the Lord is the most useful for all Catholics because it excites in them a hatred of sin and a love of virtue. The fear of God excites in us a hatred of anything that might offend him and leads us to repent of past sins and to avoid sins in the future. It says in the book of Ecclesiasticus, the fear of the Lord driveth out sin. St. Ambrose, commenting on this, explains, Fear always precedes repentance. 
Where there is no fear, there is no improvement. And the conscience can scarcely, scarcely be purified from sin unless it has first been shaken by fear. Many are converted by love, but still many more are converted because of the fear of God. This fear is not only the beginning of conversion, but also progress in virtue. It is, by con <clears throat> it is by in our conscience is purified from sin, while it helps us to acquire many virtues. He who fears God moves himself to avoid every shadow of sin and to enter upon the path of perfection. It says in the book of Exodus, God has come to prove you and that the dread of him might be in you and you should not sin. He that truly fears God guards himself against all that might displease God. The book of Proverbs says, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. The fear of God animates us to walk in the rough paths of virtue and to persevere courageously in the practice of them. He that feareth God will do good. And without this gift of fear, which is the very first gift, is the beginning of all religion, nothing good can be effected if we do not have the fear of the Lord. Throughout the book of Ecclesiasticus, we read about this fear. <clears throat> it says, the fear of the Lord is like a paradise of blessings. And then again it says, they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and in the sight will sanctify their souls. And again, the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus says, they that fear the Lord will seek after the things that are well-pleasing to him. And they that love him shall be filled with his law. When one reflects upon whom it is that they must fear, namely the all-powerful, the all-wise, the all-seeing God, this fear is a good teacher. It's a teacher of piety. Many would be enamored with the transitory vanities and pleasures of this life if the fear of future punishment did not turn them aside from the dangerous objects. And on this account, this fear of the Lord casts out the inordinate love for temporal and earthly things which might be an occasion of temptation and sin to serious sin. And when a man has overcome First, the difficulties of the path of perfection. He walks courageously, continually to advance in perfection. St. Bridget once said that if we bear with patience the first pricks of the thorns that beset our feet, then soon they will be turned to roses. St. Lawrence Justinian describes the journey. He says, Pilgrims on the way to eternity, oh, what good desires and resolutions do they entertain? What holy thoughts, what pious aspirations. From these arise the most commendable works of virtue, which produce the fruits of which the apostle speaks and says they are the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, and so on. As it says in the book of Ecclesiasticus, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's also the goal of love. This filial fear of sanctifying charity and sanctifying charity are like twin sisters. St. Jerome says the perfection of virtue consists in this, that we love God with a holy fear, and which is the same thing that we reverence him with a sincere love. Fear is transformed into love because perfect charity casteth out fear. St. Paul counsels us, he says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Each one of us should be afraid of ourselves. If he fears nothing else, says St. Augustine, he who hopes to secure a blissful eternity should learn to be careful and timorous but when death approaches, we may begin at last to lose a little of the holy fear. For the new, nearer we come to our everlasting country, the less we have dread if we persevere in virtue. A wanderer who is far removed from his fatherland 
has great cause for fear because he's not in his home. And yet this holy fear produces no sadness or sadness of spirit, but rather a joy, a real contentment, and a solid satisfaction because the wanderer away from his home is wandering back to his home. And the closer he gets to his end, the little fear he has. Divine fear is that precious gift of the Holy Ghost. It arises not from objects of either present or the future time, but from a contempt of transitory temporal goods and a firm hope for eternal happiness. St. Augustine says, In heaven, it is true, our joy will be unmixed with fear, but now it is mingled with fear because we do not enjoy perfect security. My dear faithful, let us be filled with a holy fear now in this world, a fear of offending so good a God, so that at the last judgment we may have nothing to fear, and we may repose in confidence in the sacred heart of our divine love, hearing from the lips of our Lord himself, which he said to allay the fear of uh, his timid disciples. He says, fear not, it is I, I who am your God, your merciful Redeemer, and I who am to be your everlasting reward. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.